Hi guys and welcome. Today we're going to make one of these beautiful ephemera embellishment holders journal. Um, this one is slightly bigger than A4 because I had some purchased um, adhesive pockets. But today we're going to make it round the A4 size and we're going to use vellum. So you can see I'm going to put a dangle on the edge there. I've got some beautiful corner protectors there, but absolutely beautiful. And we're going to make it in the same material. So this one I'm making today um, will go in my Etsy shop um, once I get it finished. So what I've done um, just to speed things up a bit is I've already adhered it to the material. And I'll go through the sizes um, for this guys and I'll also put it down in the description below just so you have them as a reference if you want to make one yourself I'll also put a link to my Etsy shop as well so we've got um, some quite thick um, board here it's like a grey board but if you don't have that you could layer some pieces of cardstock I'd probably go three or four layers depending on the thickness because you want it fairly robust being a cover now the measurements for this is eight inches by ten and three quarters so you'll need two of those and then the spine we've got is ten and a half by one and a quarter and depending on how many signatures you want to put in it you can go a wider spine if you want to the other one that i made is a little bit wider and i had four signatures in that however today we're going to put um three or two or three depending on how many pages per signature so you would get some, I've used just some quick dry adhesive that bonds to, or fabric glue that bonds to material. Um, it is quite fumy, which is why I've done it ahead of time because I'm in quite a small studio space. So then we're going to um, just, similar to covering a book, if you covered your books at school. So we just put a slot there, I just miter it off a little bit there just to take out some bulk so we'll do that on both sides I'll do best I can to get this in in camera shot for you guys because it is fairly fairly big and then with the corners we want to just angle them off as well And don't go right to the edge or the corner of the cardstock. You need a little bit there to cover over, but we are going to put some corner protectors on there as well. And that should hold everything down and stop it fraying. If not, you can get fabrics uh, fray stop or you can put some extra glue on there. All right, lovely. So now we're just going to fold them over and always go top and bottom first. So just bear with me while I quickly glue these in place and then we can get on to making our pages. And then we just fold it over. Along the bottom. I don't skimp on the glue whenever I'm uh, gluing material. Because you want to get make sure that it adheres really well. Because you're sticking a different substance they're not both the same so one's cardstock and one's material this is beautiful tapestry material um, I actually picked it up from spotlight a couple of weeks ago I really liked the denim -y look to it So I hope everyone's um, going okay today. We've got some heat and some bushfires out here 
in Australia at the moment, um, which is usual for this time of year as things heat up. At the moment, they're fairly controlled. So I'm hoping we've got a, some uh, rain forecast towards the end of the week. So I'm hoping that that will help out a bit in relation to the fires. These are so much fun guys and as you've seen um, when I flipped through the other one it puts all your ephemera so if you've got cut out butterflies or in, in my case that one I've just put my labels in it but if you've got cut out flowers butterflies when you open it up it's all there on the page so when you're creating it makes the process really a lot simpler to be able to just flip through a book um, rather than flip through a container where you've got them all, which is what was happening with me, and it can, it can overwhelm you. But it's this way, you can actually see it all there. And don't worry too much about the inside here because we're going to put another um, base plate over the top of that in, in relation to a piece of cardstock. So it's all pattern paper, whichever you choose. You, it, by using cardstock, you just add that extra bit of strength on there as well. One more side to go. And the beauty of making these yourself, you can make them as big or as little as you like. So like I said, this size that I've given you today, it's just slightly under the size of an A4 page. And I'm going to show you how to hinge pages together so you can get that bigger size and turn it into a book. So I'm just pulling it a little bit tight there to keep that fold over nice and neat there we go that's front and back so if you've got a bit of a pattern to your paper uh, to your material just make sure you got it up the right way if it's not you could flip it over and this is the stage to do that so I actually like this one as the front it's got that that middle emblem there all right, and so then we get some cardstock um, seven and a half by ten, which is slightly smaller than our our cover because we like to have a bit of the border around to show off that beautiful material. And then I would butt it right up until the edge edge of that card just to cover that grey, and then we've got another piece that we're going to when we sew our signatures in we're going to cover it over and place it down there like that but i'll give you the measurements for that as well so let's just glue this one down and you can just pick a coordinating color i didn't go blue on the inside this time i went a fairly neutral because we've gone a little bit more neutral in the uh, signature pages And if you wanted to go playing cardstock for your signature pages, that's fine. I've got a bit of a mix of both. Um, you could simply do some stamping on if you wanted a bit of a pattern. I didn't want too much background pattern because I wanted to highlight what I'm putting in my pockets in relation to the labels or the, the ephemera. And the beauty of making them out of the vellum you can cut them to whatever size that you want so have a think about what you actually want to put in each pocket and you don't have to do all the pockets at once either so I'm just going to get my bone folder and just press that down firmly just to make sure it's adhering to the whole 
background and then over and we'll do the other side just get rid of any excess threads the wind picking up out there at the moment which is not great on a hot day like today with the fires Once you make one of these guys, uh, you'll, you'll find that you'll want to make more and more. It's the same principle as making a journal really doing the cover, putting the pages in, and all we're doing as an extra step is putting, uh, well, I'm using vellum, but you can use acetate. You can buy the, the ready-made stick-on pockets, which is what I've put in the first few pages of that one I showed you before. But what I found with those, they are good, but they only come in certain sizes and you can waste some of your page. Um, otherwise, you've got to make the journal a bit bigger like I did with that one. It's bigger than an A4 to get two across. Just so you're sort of not wasting. All right, so that one's down there. Now we're going to just, um, I'm going to do the the middle but we're not going to stick it down so we're not going to stick it down till we stitch our signatures in here so what I've done here is I have found the center and I have found the center and then I've just done a line in the center of each because we're doing two signatures if we were doing four you'd put your holes in the middle of each one and then we're going a five pamphlet stitch before I glue the paper down, because I've already marked on the holes here, I'm just going to get an awl or a pokey tool and I'm just going to punch through those holes that I've got marked there. And all I did there was when I marked it in the middle, I then found where each quarter was as a, a measurement. I didn't get the ruler out and, and I wasn't too pedantic with them as long as they're even here and we're going to do a template up which I'll show you how to do that to make sure that our signatures are all the same spacing as well now the reason I punched it on there is because I'm going to glue that there and then I'm going to turn that back over there and punch back through so then we've got our our holes on the right side when we go to sew our signatures on there and then once we've done, put our signatures on, we then glue it in. So it gives you like a, a false spine and you don't have the stitching on the outside. If you like the stitching on the outside, then you would punch the holes in here and go straight through the cover. And then we put our cardstock, or you could do material on here again if you wanted to. But cardstock is easier once you've got your holes punched to find them when you're sewing your signature on. Just make sure you don't punch through your fingers. I actually did that the other day and it's still a little bit sore. I, I just wasn't concentrating. I didn't have my fingers spaced apart like that. You can put it down if you've got something um, on your desk that you normally punch holes in. That's the safer way to do. Or just a thick book. You could put it down and, and poke your holes through there. 
And then I'll just go through the front just to even and get rid of those rough. Actually, I'll just get rid of the rough piece that's coming up through like that. And then I'll poke it out the other way. It just neatens it up. Holes are slightly off there, but I've just evened them up a little bit. Now I would get a, just a scrub bit. Um, just make it just has to be the same length. So I'm just going to cut a slight bit off it, and then I would fold it in half, just to make like a valley, because we're going to use this to punch holes in our signature. To the exact spacing of our um, inside spine. And then I'll turn it to the side there. And I'll just hold it down whereas the ends are even. And then where the holes are, I'll just go to where the middle is on that fold and I'll put the holes or mark where the holes are going to be. There we go. <clears throat> and just in the valley, just poke the hole where it should be. So if you're using, if you're going to make um, a few of these, or if you want to keep it as a journal template, then make up one of these as a template, keep one of these as a template. That way you don't have to do those steps every time you do it. You will have to still do the similar steps I've done here for this inside spine. <coughs> Excuse my coughing. I'm still on the tail end of um, a, a virus. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, actually, no, I'm going to leave it. Um, you can cut that off and even it up with your inside templates. For strength, I'm going to leave it at that length because it's a really neutral colour anyway. All right, so now we're going to get our pages and I'm going to show you how to hinge them together so I've already done the rest of them just to show you so I've done some fairly plain plain colors some cardstock patterned papers these beautiful ones as well um, so I've done a few ahead of time but I thought I'd keep a couple and show you how the, how we do it. So the inside pages, they, they're going to be slightly smaller than your cover. The inside pages are seven and a half by ten and a half. And then the actual page hinge is ten and a half, which is the same length as your page, and one and a quarter across. So decide what side you actually want to use as your hinge. I'm actually going to go the the inside green it's got a bit of green on the paper and then you just fold it in half right along and get your bone score and just make that a little little bit crisp that fold um, and the reason being is because we're going to be putting some pages inside other pages so we want it to sit as flat as possible and then we're going to glue it so 
So normally I would use probably art glitter glue um, or this quick dry wet glue is fine. It's on my desk, so that's what I'm using. Now when you do it, push, push that in so the edge of the page butts up inside that fold. And get it as flush as you can. It's just a tad over, which is probably my cutting. And the same on this end, but it's easy enough to neaten off like that. And there we go, we've got our pages. All right, so let's do one more. So once again, you've got your 10 and a quarter by one and a quarter. Sorry, 10 and a half by one and a quarter. And then fold it in half. And then get your bone folder. So if you didn't have a bone folder, you could use your fingernail, as long as you get that fold down crisp. And then your pages again. So your pages are seven and a half by 10 and a half. And then we're gonna glue the hinge on. So I'm using, um, it's quite thick pattern paper, this one. It's, it's more like cardstock. So you want something a little bit sturdy because we're gonna be sewing through it and it's gonna be holding your pages. So I would use something probably just a little bit thicker than paper. So push it in so your page goes right inside, up as close as possible. Trim any excess off. Adhere the glue down, just with an extra, just a bit of firm pressure. And now we get our other pages. So work out what you sort of want um, as your first page. I think we're going three double pages. Her signature. Actually, it might be four. And then tuck them in as far as you can. You're gonna have some overlay here that you will cut off. So I've done, I've made three signatures there, but I am only going to put two in there because of the bulk of it. <clears throat> so they got one, two, three, which is six, 
12 pages, which will give you one, two, three, four, five, six, 12. It'll give you 24 surfaces to put, put on your, uh, to put your vellum on to uh, put your ephemera in. So it'll be, it'll become quite chunky. So you really don't want to have too much more than that in there. Now I'm just going to trim off as neat as I can just these overhangs. I do have a um, commercial guillotine that I would normally take them in to do that um, but I don't have it over here in my studio. And you can see that that just neatens it off. And then we'll do the same on this one. That's why you just, you get inside there and you push it in as close as you can. You could also mark it and then put it in your cutter. Lovely. All right, so now let's sew the signatures in. So I'm just going to get my piercing mat here, or you could use a book as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And we're going to grab our template that we did before. One thing we didn't mark on top and bottom. Okay, so on your template, I write top, so you know which is top because we haven't measured those exactly. We've pretty well much eyeballed these holes when I did the template. They will be out slightly, so we just um, wanna make definitely sure that our holes line up to how we're gonna place it in, in our journal. And then get the first signature And we're going to put holes down the middle. I will clip the pages together. <coughs> and then just push the all through doesn't have to go right through at this stage. Just enough to make a mark there and then be able to push straight through. like that. <clears throat> so we'll do the, the other one. Find the middle page, which is that one. Clip it just to hold it in place. and then pierce right through. Once you've done this a few times, you'll find it, it gets easier every time. 
and then we just want to get some um, waxed cotton and a needle and we're going to sew these in. So the needles that I'm using, a, a, they are book binding needles. They've got, they've only got a, a fairly blunt tip. It does have a bit of a sharp, but it's got a nice big eye on it. So you can use a regular needle if you've got one with a big enough eye for your cotton. And then I've got this waxed cotton. If you've only got normal cotton, that's fine. You're not going to be putting out too much tension on it anyway. But this one is really strong. And then you just basically go two heights and a little bit extra of your pages. <coughs> Excuse my coughing. And then we go into the middle hole. Now find, we'll put our mat away. I always um, sew my signatures to the left first, which is basically the front one. So choose which one you want to have as your front one. And then we go through the next hole towards the top. And through our signature pull it fairly firm we don't want to pull our tail through so we want to leave about that much on your tail and then we go through the top And then we go back down through the next hole down. So keeping a, a bit of tension on the cotton and then back through the middle. And then we go to the next one down. And then we go through the bottom one. And then back up through that one. Then we just want to pull a bit of tension on our cotton is why I like the, the stronger waxed cotton. And then we're going to tie a knot. And I like to do a double knot just to be sure. And then we just snip the ends off. So that's one signature done, as you can see. And that's what we're going to glue down onto this, this plate to give you that false spine. Now let's sew the next one. So um, another piece of cotton, so two lengths of plus a little bit extra. looking for my needle I've got a real habit of losing needles I'm sure they're all um, ending up on the floor but I'll grab another one I need a little um, magnet on my desk I might have to invest in those I think we are memory make them they're a big diamond and you can just run it around your desk 
and um, it picks up all the little metal pieces on your desk. All right, so if we go this next one, and I've, I've already put some vellum pages in this one, which is our next step to do. Okay, so we're going through the middle again. So exactly the same steps as before. Up through the next top one. And you might have to turn it over. Over this way for this one. So you go through your spine plate. your book or your signature then up through the top one Now we're going to go back through this hole here. Out through the middle one. Trying to keep a bit of tension on the cord, but we can re-tighten it if you're finding it too difficult. It's not that hard. Um, it's probably a little bit harder because I've got it extended out in front of me. I haven't got my head out over the top of it. And then down through that last hole. And you can also do this, uh, which is, I do a majority of mine with just a three hole pamphlet stitch, but because this is gonna have a bit of weight in it and it is bigger than uh, the normal size journals that I do, I went with the five and then back up through the middle there. And just a bit of tension on both of them. Just make sure on the outside, they're fairly tight, <coughs> pardon me. And then we tie our knot. And then I tie a double one. it off now before we glue that in there because it does take a little bit um, for that to glue I want to show you um, as you you would have seen in one of these signatures or this one I've actually glued some vellum down in readiness so we might do this front page so I do use art glitter glue which is this one sorry the labels a bit tatty because it's a well-used bottle because it dries um, clear so you know you decide what width 
you want as far as height in your pockets. You can go bigger if you've got bigger embellishments. I was aiming more initially with this to go with labels. Actually, I might go this one. I think that one's two inches. I'll put it down the bottom. And then just a small bead of glue, which is another reason I like the art glitter. One, it dries clear. Two, it comes with this metal applicator. So you can do really fine lines. And then get it as straight as you can. Glue on three sides so you've got that pocket. And then this one, uh, the smaller strips, they're one and a half, but you can go thinner as well. Once again, depending on what you want to put inside the pockets. And then these ones are I'm pretty sure they are one inch, but I'm just going to measure them. Yeah, about one and a quarter. Because you want your labels to be able to still hang out a little bit and not disappear completely inside the pocket but you also want the pocket to be able to hold a good half of the label so you know there is room because there are smaller labels or embellishments there is room to even go a bit smaller than the one and a quarter So if you didn't want to put another another strip up the top there which I'm going to you could have some taller labels um, you've got room down the bottom for the taller ones so you choose what size you want to put on each page and how many You could even go um, and have individual pockets and have, you know, two, two pockets where you can put some really tall stuff in. So have a think about when you, if you're making these yourself, have a think about what you're going to put in them. And then we would get our, for example, our labels. So you're going to go something from this where you're rummaging through to having something really organized like that that's the big difference so it's definitely you know and then you just tuck you just tuck your labels in you know like that all right so let's let's do the next page over and if you've already got a page done, you would you would simply line them up similar. You don't have to, which I'm not going to, oh, because I've got a bigger pocket. I want to have down the bottom on this one. And you only need a fine bead of glue, just enough to hold it down so 
So you can see what I mean about I don't like too much pattern on the background. So this faded muted pattern is perfect. I think um, even the plane, you could put some very light stamping on the plane if you wanted to, but really you, when you put your embellishments in there, you're not going to see it. So like I said, guys, this one will be going in my Etsy shop. Um, I will be making some more as well um, because I've, you know, had a few comments that people don't know how to make a journal or they, they really want to have a go at something like this, but they're a bit overwhelmed. Message me too if you want me to make one without putting the strips in because you want to customise the strips yourself, then um, definitely I would recommend doing that as well. So I'm going to do this page over only because I want to put the bigger pockets down the bottom and I'm going to have to cut some more vellum, which I can finish off camera to do some smaller strips up the top for your labels. Okay, so let's now glue this in. So I would suggest a really, whether it's a quick drying or a glue that will really adhere, and I put a lot on, so I'm using this quick dry. Or I like your fabric glue, your Fabri-Tac. I think your, your Tarzan glue. And really put a fair bit on because we want it to adhere really strong and we are putting cardstock on cardstock so So one more thing before I glue that down. So I'm just going to pop that off to the side for just a minute is to, I want to put one of these ring pulls on the outside. So I'm just going to quickly poke a hole. In that. You just won't be able to do it afterwards. It's going to turn it over and make that just a little bit bigger. And these are like a brad.
and then we just open up the split just make sure the rings how you want it on the outside like that and now we're going to so make sure you've got it up the right way and now we're going to glue our spine down Now I'll just get the bone folder and apply a little bit of pressure. Even in the middle there. our book up, apply a little bit of pressure on the outside, the only last step is for the corner protectors, I'm just going to see if I've got some here in the studio, if not I will have to put them on later. if I've got um, four of them so I'm gonna go silver again you can I've got these beautiful antique bronze ones as well actually we might go the bronze because it matches the ring pull that we've got on the outside if I've got four of them which I don't, so I'm going to go silver, the same as the one I've made for myself. And I will have to get some more. So I, you'll need a, a set of pliers for these, so just some flat pliers or something to um, squash them together because this back plate we like to squash down. What I, what I do first is I put some glue on the material. You don't have to, because uh, once you've gripped them on, they're gripped on. But I always like to add a little bit of glue anyway. And then they just slip on like that. So holding it in place as far in as you can get it and then it's just a matter of crimping it closed you don't even need too much muscle as you can see it's the back that grips on there And just polish that glue off and then the next one hold it in place with a bit of pressure against it Then we turn it over and we do the back. Now 
Now you don't have to cover these with material either guys. You can use some really nice um, coloured pattern paper. If you gel print, you could have some of your own prints on there. And then last one. Turn it over and there we go guys um beautiful ephemera embellishment holder go through and put um your your tags your cutout butterflies everything in there i'll go through off camera and finish the pages but as you can see there's going to be a lot of space for you to store all your beautiful ephemera and embellishments um, so definitely a worthwhile project for you to have I'll just snip that off the end there um, to make sorry uh, it is a little bit of effort but the rewards are as you can see once you've got it you've got it you can run some material down there if you don't like the edge I, I don't mind that edge because I know it's a strong it's it's nice and thick and it's strong there you can put pockets in the front there you could put more vellum strips and have extra extra space um, you could put a big clear pocket in the back and just store some extra embellishments um, that you don't want to have displayed on your pages but i hope i've inspired you guys it's definitely once you make a few of these um, they're the same process as making a journal then it's endless of what you can do. But these are really, really cute. And once you've got your, um, your, you know, your tags, your tickets, your butterflies, everything displayed, when you're creating, you can just open it up. You can have a separate one for your labels, separate one for, you know, your butterflies, mushrooms, all that sort of stuff. Oh, it's there straight onto a cluster or straight onto a pocket. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's more joyful looking through that than rummaging through the tin like I showed you before. But thanks, guys. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Sorry if it's been a bit longer than normal, but definitely worthwhile sitting through when you get something like this as a reward out the other end. Thanks, guys. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Bye.